Hi there, I'm Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today's tutorial that I'd like to share is this latest blanket I've made um, is this, uh, it's basically my griddle stitch gingham but I made it in the buffalo plaid colors, red plaid, whatever you'd like to call that. And I put on a half double crochet ribbed boarding here that I border that I slip stitched to the blanket and if you saw my Pendleton stripe blanket tutorial last week it's basically the same stitch I just instead of using single crochet I used half double crochet and um, so that's what this tutorial will be for today just like to always get on here and say thank you to everyone who stops by the channel I am still a beginner at YouTube and learning how to really do good videos for you so you can see the blankets that I'm making. Um, so thank you for your patience. And um, most of the time, these videos are on my website and I will put a link in the description where you can go get the exact and more instructions about the blanket um, on my website, daisyfarmcrafts.com. That's where all of my patterns are. And, um, and then I, just post the YouTube video here um, so I kind of use both platforms to um, help you learn about if you're interested in making the blankets that I'm making in hopes to become a grandma someday that is why I started crocheting a couple years ago no, never knowing at all that this crochet community even was this large and so friendly and so interested and I'm grateful I can share my new, you know, my ideas with you and just keep making these blankets. So thank you for stopping by and appreciate all of your comments and let's get started. Okay, I have made this blanket with Peyton's Canadiana. This is black, burgundy, and cardinal. My friends at Yarnspirations.com sent me this yarn to design whatever I want and I did thought these would be perfect colors to make that buffalo plaid in the red. But I honestly, I've never worked with this particular brand of yarn and this acrylic is some of the nicest, softest yarn I've ever worked with. And I am really glad they sent that to me to play around with. Oh my gosh, I am a new fan for Canadiana. And I've actually on my Instagram account, several, several people have told me that they love it too. So anyway, this blanket, um, I'm going to just be demonstrating a swatch. If you've never seen me do this before, this is, I would love for you to just do a swatch first before you tackle this bl blanket. However, I am just starting with a foundation chain. I put two chains on my hook. I insert my hook into that very first one that I made and I pull up a loop and then I yarn over and just pull through one of the loops. Now keep an eye on that loop because that's where you'll be working again. And it's kind of like if you need to mark it, mark it. But if not, I just kind of stick my thumb on there so I know where I'm going to be inserting my hook. That is probably the trickiest part about doing a foundation chain. So now I'm gonna look back and I'm going to, and here's the other thing, you need to go underneath the top two loops. So it's kind of a little tricky. Um, you do not have to do a foundation chain. If this is, you're a way beginner, please just put 30 um, chains on your hook and we'll go from there. But if you've always wondered what a foundation chain looks like, that is what it is. So I'm inserting my hook under those two loops. I'm pulling through and then I'm just pulling through one and then pulling through two. It's almost like you are making a, a what's called an extended single crochet. So I'm underneath those two loops. I'm pulling through, and this is the extended single crochet part, just pulling through one and then pulling through two. Okay, let me show you just a little bit more and then I'm going to go off camera and I will get my 30 chains. Oh, I always have that desire to <laughs> to yarn over. I do not want to yarn over. I want to insert my hook under the two loops of that, of this chain right there that I made. So keep your finger on it if you have to. Mark, take the time to mark it until you really can figure it out. It's right there. 
my thumb was on it. And take your time. This was a little tricky for me to learn at first too, but I really enjoyed how it gave my blanket a little bit of stretch and um, was perfect to getting this gingham started. I'm using a size I hook and um, okay, so either get 30 chains or 30 foundation chains on your hook. Okay, for this sample swatch, I've worked 30 uh, foundation chain, 30 chains of them. If you're just doing a regular chain, just work, just work 30. And then, so and how you count that is go ahead and look at these Vs and count and make sure you have 30. And so now for all of us, it doesn't matter, I'm chain one. And so that means on your foundation, if you did a regular chain, obviously you'll be you'll be doing 31. Um, but for this, now we just have it, so it's 30 foundation chains plus one. And in this very first stitch, we're going to work a single crochet. Now a griddle stitch is alternating single crochet and double crochet. So in your next stitch, work a double crochet. And in the next, and I am working underneath those two V's, pulling up a loop, working through, that's one single crochet, and then I'm doing a double crochet. And I'm going to alternate those for the next 10 spaces, or stitches. Single, double, single, double, and I will end on a double and I'm going to show you how you are going to change colors and start that checked look. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, here's number nine, which will be a single crochet. And here we are. So in the 10th stitch, I want you to go ahead and start the stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and just pull through those first two loops on the hook. Now drop your red to the back for a little bit. Go ahead and pick up your burgundy and simply lay that over the hook and give yourself a fairly long tail that you'll be able to weave in later when your project is finished and pull that through the last two loops. Okay, that's how you, you get this new color started. Now put that the tail out of your way. Um, Go ahead and get your tension ready with the burgundy. And at the same time, I am giving a little bit of a tug on the red and it's gonna come along with me. So my next stitch will be, be a single crochet because I still am alternating single, double, single, double, no matter about color changes. Enter your hook. I am going underneath the two loops and I am going underneath the yarn being carried through, pulling through. Now I'll work a double. And that yarn is coming right along with me. Oops, work that single. You'll get into a rhythm, trust me, and it won't, and then your brain will mindlessly go, oh, single, double, single, double. But at first, ah, sometimes I'll put two singles in a row and have to undo just until my brain can get ready get used to doing the single double, single double. But one tip is, since it's based on the number 10, you always will change color in a double crochet. So if you, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you are finding that you are hitting a 10th stitch and it's a single crochet, something has gone wrong. It will always be a double crochet. I'm working underneath those two loops. I'm going through the first two stitches and now here's another thing that's gonna help you keep your yarn from, from twisting. Keep the burgundy color towards the front. And now pick up that red that you've been carrying along, see how, and, and give it a little tug if you need to in case it didn't lay perfectly flat against your, um, the work. And let's, you know, continue on with your next single crochet, double crochet, Single, double, give that yarn a little tug, make sure, and I'm just going, you know, just laying it 
along the work. It's just laying right there. Nothing fancy about it. Other than I'm just bringing it along with me so those color transitions can be smooth and really give us a great look. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here I am, and it does look like I accidentally did 31 foundation chains. Please forgive me, but that's why we're going to do a fa uh, <laughs> practice swatch. This is the tenth stitch. It will be a double crochet. Okay. Now, I don't need to pull through with the new color because I'm turning. So go ahead and finish it with red. Chain one to turn. Turn your work like a page in the book. And also, go ahead and wrap this burgundy just around the end because we're going to be carrying it along with, with us. And in this very first stitch, we're still going to work a single crochet, even though that last stitch was a double crochet. That's um, a great thing about I love about this griddle stitch is that now single crochets are very easily worked into the tops of the double crochets. Really fairly easy to see. And now we work the double down here in the single. And I still am pulling this burgundy along with me. Now I know a lot of you email me and say, hey, I can see my my um, yarn, you know, as I carry it through. Yes, you can see that, but I promise you when the blanket gets finished, it sort of just adds to the overall look and it's really not that noticeable. Now, if it is poking out, that's where I'm going to want you to pay attention and give that yarn just a little bit of a tug before you change colors. So what I mean is just give it a little bit of a tug, make sure it's laying flat that you've carried it along smoothly. Here we are in that stitch. I'm leaving my red to the back, uh, pulling up the burgundy that I've been carrying along. And now I'll continue to just work and carry the red along with me. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish this out for this particular um, pattern. I just needed eight rows of the griddle stitch and I had a square. And so be flexible about that. If you crochet tighter than me or or just just differently, I mean don't don't do this blanket too tight. You don't want it to be a doormat since you are carrying yarn. I've gone up a hook size than it's recommended. Um, you, you know, but make your, make your square, your things square. So if, if to seven, you got to seven rows and it looks perfectly square, just stay right there. No, no reason to do that extra eighth row and make it look too rectangle. We want as square as possible, you know, for the look. So it won't mess up the blanket at all. Oh, maybe in the dimensions a little bit, but you know, it's a blanket. It's not like it has to fit anybody. This one, oh gosh, I haven't even measured the, the blanket I did. Usually I do them between 34 inches wide and about maybe 38 to 40 inches tall, or sometimes I make them a perfect square, which this one might have been just because of the, the way I, you know, obviously gingham naturally kind of lends itself to becoming a perfect square. Okay, so I think you've got enough to um, continue your block. And I'm gonna finish the eight rows. Uh, so push pause, maybe get your sample swatch going. I'll pop back on for a second and show you how I'm doing cutting and adding in the black. And then um, we will get to that border. Okay, I have my... Um, swatch with eight rows and I'm ready to introduce the black. So make sure you cut off and leave a fairly long tail of the red and for this color change at first you're going to pull up and pull through with the burgundy. Okay, chain one and turn and you're going to work the first block in the burgundy color and don't worry about carrying the red quite yet. I mean you won't carry the red obviously you've already cut that off and we will work our way over to the black color change and um, 
going, you know, alternating. And I'm just hoping so much that I didn't think about these dark colors on camera. They really are tricky to photograph. Um, hopefully I'll be able to edit this good enough so that you can see the colors. Um, okay, so I'm just alternating double crochet, single crochet. In my last stitch, I'm going to work that double crochet half of it, pull through just two. I'm gonna still keep my um, yarn to the front, the burgundy, and I'm introducing the black in the same way, just laying that over the hook and pulling through the last two loops and leaving that tail. Make sure you give yourself a long tail so you can weave the end in. And now I'll crochet over uh, the burgundy color. Carry that along with me. And keep going. Okay, that's all. Now we're just alternating in the same manner, but we're just doing the black and the burgundy. Okay, so I'll finish um, just one more block of this, and then we'll come back and I will show you how I did the border. border. So I use a tapestry needle just like this, a blunt type needle. And, um, you know, I'll just start over here on an end, basically. That's why I like to leave a long tail so you have plenty of room on your needle. And in case you've never seen what it is when we say weave in and out or weave in your ends, you, there are, there is no like rules to this other than go back and forth, under, in, up, around, as many stitches as possible until you feel like the yarn is secure. And hide it as best you can. And it naturally actually does just hide <laughs> and disappears. So go ahead and weave those ends in and then we will get the border started. Right, so the first thing that you need to do is go ahead and complete the other three sides of your blanket with a row of single crochet. This is our foundation row and so we already have that row of single crochet. So what you're need, going to need to do is like place the blanket like this, go to that um, far right hand corner and which would be really it's your starting chain corner and um, go ahead and in that pull, whatever, right there, uh, pull up a loop, chain one, and then I sometimes like to just hold on to this tail and I go right back in there and work a single crochet, kind of working over that tail so it secures it. And I'll go back in later and weave that in. And that counts, this first one is really my corner stitch. So I work another one right into that space and that will be my first single crochet. Now. If you remember, each you know each one of our blocks of color had eight stitches. So I'm going to try my best to just work eight single crochet per each block of color. Now, if um, that is the best way, to, uh, well, that's what I always try to do when I want my border to be as even as possible. The sides are always the trickiest part. So, because you don't, you're, it's just not really clear where you insert your hook, and that's okay. You kind of just have to guess about it. But my goal is to just get eight of these per, um, per color. And then um, the, hopefully, and then it just, it kind of works out more even. And then you don't have a roughly border or two, you know, one that's too, pulled too tight. So um, I can't talk and count at the same time. So I'll go off camera. But so that's what I'm saying eight for this, eight. And when you get to this corner, go ahead and work three single crochet, and you'll do that over here in each. Each corner is three single crochets. Okay, and then I'll meet you back after you finish up going around your blanket. All right, how did you do? Oh, these sides are so tricky. It's totally okay if sometimes you ended up having nine. Just the important part is, it, this is where I feel like, you know, you have to really it's kind of comes doing the sides. You can just be flexible. You'll just know that if, if this is rippling, you've put too many. If it's pulled too tight, there's just not enough. So I wish there was a, 
I guess I would say one per row is a guideline, but if you need an extra just to make sure it you know, looks nice, do it. Okay, so I'm finishing this last corner with just two single crochet because I'm counting the one that we've already made on the foundation row as you know, turning the corner. And the other thing that I've noticed that I like to do for this border, because we are no longer working over a you know, yarn. So this, this is gonna be a little bit thicker in this blanket. I mean, in this part of the blanket. And now our border is just gonna be a single strand. So I went one size down. So now I've switched to an H, whereas previously I was working with an I. And again, here's a num another number that is flexible. I personally just liked how eight, the width of eight um, chains out here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But you are free to make your border as, if you want it wider, just the number of chains does not matter. Just keep track of that number of chains. So now I know that I started with eight. I will always have seven stitches back to the border and that's the number I want to keep track of. Okay, so, oh whoops, and I want to do two more, sorry, because this is my half double crochet back loop only border. I've done a single crochet one before, but I did half double crochet on this one. So make sure you've got two extra stitches. Okay, so I'll still have seven um, stitches back to the border. So I'm just working regular half double crochet and I just, I really wanna apologize that I, I've i looked back at this video as I'm taping and gosh, it is so hard to see the red colors. I, But you know what, this is the yarn I used for the project. I guess you learn as you go, but I really wish I could, I should have been doing this in a lighter color so you could see better. But anyway, do your best. Of course, the pattern will, you know, written instruction is on my website. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the seventh stitch. Now, all you do is slip stitch into the next space, the chain that's on the on the, you know the base of the blanket right, right here, and the next one. Okay. Then what you do is just turn your work like a page in a book, and in that, you know, the last one that you did down there, go ahead and work a back loop half double crochet. And you will be working seven of them on out to the edge. Okay, just like that. And the chain two that you did at the very first, it never counts as a stitch. These chain two turning chains are just simply that. They're just height to get you around. Now just, um, I like to turn, I'm actually gonna just turn my work back and then go ahead and work in these uh, half, or sorry, half double crochets in the back loop, just like that. And here's why I'm gonna tell you, keeping, you know, you, Pay attention to your counts because that first stitch that we did, it gets, it kind of gets pulled tight from those slip stitches and so it, sometimes it's, it's very easy to miss. I wanna make sure that you see that. So here I am, I have done my six and then that seventh one, just that back loop, it's down there but it gets hidden. So I just wanna make sure, it's, it, it's, I guess speaking from experience, it's an easy one to miss because I missed it a couple times and I had to undo my work. Now slip stitch to the next empty space that is on, the, you know, of your single crochets and slip stitch to the next one. Okay, turn your work and start doing those back loop half double crochets all the way out to the end. Okay, there's just one little tiny thing that you have to do as you approach the corner. So just um, get this uh, worked and I'm gonna push pause and I'll be back to show you uh, what I do to, when I get to the corners. All right, here I am back to the beginning and I'm 
Alrighty, so I've worked all across that bottom row and I'm back to where we started with that original um, loop and I've slip stitched just one time almost just up to that. So in that very first single crochet that you made, oh, when you work back down, this is just the difference of working the corner is that you will stay in that corner for um, about three times. And this is, again, use your judgment. If it looks too crowded, don't, you know, move on. But just to get you around the corner. Okay, so here's my last stitch. So I'm going into that very first single crochet just with one slip stitch. And then I'm turning and I'm going right back around. That's what I mean, is you're not um, slip stitching over anymore. You just do the one. And now I will say, if you have watched my other tutorial with the Pendleton Stripe Blanket and the single crochet, um, I think because the half double crochet is a little bit taller stitch, um, how I worked the corner is similar to this, but uh, I, I had to do the, um, slip stitching one, one sooner. Anyway, I'm confusing you. Don't worry about that. Um, what is important is that we're working this corner, slip stitching into the same corner space for three times. So here I am coming back down. This will be my second time to slip stitch right into the very same space and then turn and work again. all the way up with your half double crochets. How have you been doing finding that seventh one? It gets buried, doesn't it? And sometimes that's, that's why I'm glad if you're doing this as a practice swatch, just so you can get those kinks figured out and not do so much work and then have it, um, you know. See so how we're just almost there? I, f I feel like one more into that corner space and then we'll just slip, start slip stitching every two again and it will get us around the corner. And it looks really, really nice. And you'll just do that all the way around the blanket and then you're done with your border. And I just love how it kind of just makes this blanket look like a sweater. So great. Oh, and I still, I cannot believe how wonderful this Canadiana yarn is. I really, I'm excited to order more in different colors and see what I can make. But this is a beautiful yarn for blanket. Okay, one more last time. Slip stitching in there, turning, working those half double crochets up that side. And I guess I just want to stay on here a little bit more just so I can show you for sure the next two that I work into. But obviously, it'll be obvious. And I guess that probably to save time too is just to thank you all so much for coming to Daisy Farm Crafts to see what I'm up to, see the latest blanket I'm making in hopes to become a grandma. That's how my account started. I am not a crochet professional. I'm just a maker just like you. And just, um, you know, was I, I love writing down my patterns. I, Honestly, it's for a selfish purpose is I want my future grandkids, huh, if I ever do have any, or just actually just my girls um, to have access to what I'm making. And I guess I'm really passionate about crochet and I don't, you know, passing the art down so that it won't die off completely. I know it's a dying art, um, you know, not too many, well, few more of my friends have started getting interested in it just since I've started this Instagram account and um, sharing and that is exciting but I know overall crochet is you know not that popular okay so that's how I made it around the corner and I will just head down do the same thing over there over there and when you get to all the way back around you'll still work into that same space three times and then all you'll do is when you're out over here, really it'll work itself away, uh, cut off, leave a long tail, and use that tapestry needle to sew these two sides together. Piece of cake. Just like you're sewing a headband to a hat together. 
and then weave everything in and you have got a beautiful blanket. Okay, good luck. And as always, come and show me pictures of your blanket. Leave a picture on my Facebook wall. I love to share with the group there or uh, tag me. Use the hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts on Instagram. Hey, you all have a great day. See you soon.